welcome one and all to my Oster Altar video. Okay, let's get the whole thing, whole thing, whole thing, whole thing. Can I get back up? Can I back up? Can I back up? Yeah. Is it perfect? There you go. Okay. I'm all the way to the other side of my room because this thing is just massive and I love it. So happy Astara, everyone. Welcome to my altar tour. I'm very proud of this one. I start from the left and work our way to the right. So I asked my husband what he thought of this one. And he says it looked nice, but it looked kind of like an altar undercover. Like uh, people would just think it was a lot of nice spring Easter decorations. And not be able to tell what I'm talking about. I don't think so. You've got all of the uh, components of a proper altar. And I will point those out as I go along. So this one, if you watched my uh, haul, my Ostera haul part two, you'll, this is what I was talking about when I said that I was going to be making a, a spring sign with all these flowers and the letters. And that's my son over there playing with a paper bag. <laughs> talking to a paper bag. Uh, like I said, the uh, yellow seemed to blend in a bit, so I highlighted it with some blue. I thought I said I was going to do green, but I did blue just because I couldn't find my green, and I wasn't about to go looking about just for a few letters, because I'm lazy that way. Okay, so here we got my chalice. I have, I have a really simple chalice. The reason being because since I started, I'm pretty sure this is my 10th chalice. I keep breaking them all the time. And at first I would get really ornate ones. That went, the ones that I like are the ones that have um, glass and then metal on top of it. So once you break the glass, that's it. But the metal still looks cute and I have to throw it away anyways because I'm not interested in cutting up my lips while I'm doing a ritual. So now I just have an ordinary wine glass and that's my chalice and I don't know when I think that I'm responsible enough or I can trust myself or I can have a permanent altar, then maybe I'll invest in a good looking chalice again. Not, not until. Um, this here, you will recognize my uh, scarf. Um, I decided just to throw that in for a pop of color. Right here, uh, this are the egg knots. I'm sorry, I never actually got around no, no, to the no, egg knots no. review, uh, but I'll talk a little bit about them right now. Uh, I ended up using a uh, food-based food coloring. Um, don't remember off the top of my head what the company name is, but I get it from the uh, Sprouts that I go to to go grocery shopping. Um, the red I could not get any which way. The so the red color, I couldn't get any which way I tried to dye it. It wasn't happening. So I ended up having to just paint it with some craft paints. Uh, but I still think it was worth it to try to dye it because I only used one coat of paint and uh, it still looks pretty good. Uh, usually you'd have to use a couple of coats of paint at least. So it doesn't look, you know, pink or something. Uh, but the uh, the food dye, the food-based dyes, they end up making it look more like a coffee stain than a red color. And I really wanted this um, bright red color. The blue one was my favorite. The blue one it looked like it was going to be purple for a while. But then once it dried, it has this nice blue color. So yeah, the egg knots did uh, turn out pretty well, pre dyed pretty well. Um, the only difference, uh, major differences between an egg and an egg knot that I can tell you right now is that the egg knots um, are very porous. Uh, there's a sleek feel to an egg, even though they have holes, breathing holes for the baby chicks. Uh, and this one is um, pretty, pretty coarse. 
and um, you might want to try to dye them a little darker than you think you need to uh, because as they dry they're going to pale out a bit. Uh, this nest that I have from resting in, uh, just a bunch of overgrown grass, ball it up inside your hand and push out the center and blammo, you got a little nest there. So these ones were not in my haul. These giant eggs here. Um, these ones I found afterwards at Target, at the dollar section of Target. And here's one little egg that fell over. There we go. Come on, see what? There you go. And um, so this one, they were gonna go in my yard. But uh, the grass is so overgrown. We've had two, maybe three straight weeks of just rain, 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 rain. So we haven't been able to go out there, do anything with the lawn. So now it's like up to our knees. And the um, sparkly eggs that I had showed you before that I put into the ground, you, can, you can't see them. They're just lost inside the grass. So I'm not going to paint these and put them inside the uh, ground outside in the front just so I could lose them inside the grass. <laughs> so they're here on my altar now. They're going to stay here because I've already completed my altar and even if we go cut the grass before Austera, um, I don't want to rearrange things for for these little eggs. I got one right here. This one, um, I wanted to go subtle uh, so that I could put them out next year uh, with the symbolism. Just a circle and a cross, uh, equilateral cross for the uh, seasons uh, slash uh, elements. So, you know, you know, pick one. Summer, fall, winter, spring, earth, air, fire, water, whatever you want. Uh, that's what they represent. This one here, uh, the spiral of life. Also in red against pink because uh, that will be the theme that I'm going for this year would be uh, first blood, the uh, sort of um, antithesis of potential, potential life that exists uh, within a, a girl's womaning. Um, and then here, and here's the only one that's sort of obvious, semi-obvious. I suppose it could be just mistaken for a star because it, it, the uh, circle isn't closed. Um, but I don't know. I'll have to make a decision on that next year whether I want to put it out or not. So here, here's the center of uh, my altar, the real powerhouse of what's going on. I've got my uh, charging crystals around them. I always have those ones out. And um, and uh, I've got uh, um, this one, this blood red egg. This will be the center of the ritual. I haven't written the ritual out yet, but like I said, it's going to be along the lines of a womaning ritual, a posthumous woman womaning ritual. Um, uh, because I've noticed a lot of uh, um, shame revolved around a woman's cycle and after two babies and a lot of research into natural birthing processes, um, more holistic ways to care for yourself, uh, I really think that needs to change and it's, it's systemic in how you see yourself as a woman. Um, Below that, just got a few of the smaller dollar store Easter eggs, um, and then the serpent for its sort of phallic uh, resurrection um, properties. The, the serpent sheds its skin, and that's how it uh, is seen as a resurrection I item and resurrects from its own skin. Um, and let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I've got Peter Rabbit over here because, you know, bunnies. Uh, Pussy Willow is one of my favorites over here. I uh, got our uh, typical ultra accoutrements. I got our um, Azame. Atham. 
I don't know. You want to go for that war? Our smudge, um, some incense in our cauldron pot. That's only because my incense holder broke, and I didn't remember that it broke until too late. Uh, my uh, Lord and Lady uh, candles. I'm going for the rabbit for the feminine and the serpent for the masculine for obvious reasons. And uh, this guy here, this guy I sewed out of a t-shirt like two years ago. And he's supposed to be on our tree, but like I said, it's been raining, so I didn't want him to get all moldy. Uh, so now he's with me here on our altar. And I think that's what makes this uh, altar look so grandiose, is that he is just so darn big on this table. <laughs> And then got my uh, charging crystals and my pentagram. Those I will be wearing during ritual. But for now, they are adorning the wall. And here, with my tarot cards, um, I just go through and I pick out the cards that uh, speak to me as far as Ostara goes. Um, I don't do it at random. I go through my cards open face just because I haven't actually delved too far into tarot yet. Um, but uh, these are the ones that speak to me as far as uh, uh, Ostara. I will look them up as part of my ritual and see what exactly it is that these cards are saying to me. I understand that the em Empress is her symbol of fertility and nature um but that's about it i don't really know what called it to me as far as the six of uh pentacles and the queen of swords so that'll be fun to look up and see to see what they're saying so the reason that i started this oh the last thing right here this I made for my son's shower um, before he was born. A little pictures of um, Peter Rabbit, the classic pictures of Peter Rabbit. So I put those down there too. Unfortunately, I don't have any jiggies. I noticed too late. I know um, there's a lot of uh, especially newer witches that are out there that um, they say they don't really have enough space for an altar. Uh, they can't have daily devotions or anything like that. Well, I don't really have daily devotions. Cloth. Like, I don't have an altar cloth. I prefer the bare wood. Um, it's all up to your imagination. Um, we all, uh, I'm here to support, you know. Uh, we all should be here to support one another. If you need ideas on how to set up your altar, go for it. If you see something you like, take it, to, you know, go take it and run run with it. You know, as a new witch, um, I couldn't have much and I watched YouTube videos to feel like I was a part of somebody's ritual and it helped a lot. So I hope this helps you. I hope you get some ideas. I hope you feel the magic of the season blessed be i will give you guys a home tour after this so stay tuned for that